good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity. I think uh, I have to request Bunsi to have uh, probably dance after every talk, I think, isn't it? So music and dance after every talk will keep the crowd alive. Uh, that's one request for Bunsi, probably, if he's around. Um, and uh, I like what uh, Supradik has mentioned about uh, it's normally comparing apples and oranges, and I like the way that he presented as apples and androids. So my point is, I think whether you've got a satellite connection or whether it's foldable, but the safety is important. So you can get one uh, each other, you can compare it, but I think the safety aspect is the key thing in getting all these basal uh, molecules. After all, uh, we have moved a lot from human insulin um, in recent past, because of the safety. I think mainly the hypoglycemia, I think uh, time in drain, the whole concept of what we've been discussing is uh, around safety. So all the talks uh, with hypoglycemia and weight gain, that is the range people think about new molecules and coming in. So, and that is the way we should think and safety uh, is the key. And we had a, a talk with Vinay just earlier about the Bright study and people are talking about no hypoglycemia. No, I think insulin does cause hypoglycemia, which is the better one and how you use it with other molecules and what is the experience and uh, 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 knowledge what a clinician has got and that will be implemented in the clinical practice so that the hypoglycemia risk is less. And that is the way to take issues, not just comparing one molecule to other and straight off saying this one in one forum and one in another forum. No, I think, uh, it is the safety and that has to be concentrated. Now, my job is to uh, have the translating science into practice. So what we got and what are the challenges we got. Now, we got four uh, aspects that I'm going to discuss very, very briefly. I'm not going to take a lot of time on you. So impact, why uh, insulin initiation is being delayed and what is the uh, right time to do the insulin initiation and practical challenges, what we face up and how to overcome it and that has to be given and when you say that you want to overcome it what is the benefits that you're going to get by overcoming it now previously the pharma has come up with the concept of saying extremely early insulinization and everything probably that is uh, uh, not the way that i'm going to discuss um, probably that has got a different idea to it but here what is the right time to do it now impact the lot of challenges uh, the landmark is the uh, first trial that to show um, longitudinal prospective. It's more of an observational trial and it's a real world data. So four out of five people have got uncontrolled uh, diabetes in India. Um, well, um, I think less than one uh, will take one in four uh, type two take insulin, a lot of uh, barriers and things to overcome it. So once you, once you delay it, there is a significant delay in the treatment intensification. So just going from one drug to another one is, uh, is a challenge and we have to uh, take the patient's uh, thing into consideration. So come up, uh, one patient will come up and say, doctor, I'm not interested to go on this thing. And you have to consider that. There are a lot of physician factors and the patient factors comes into play as well. So it is not only easy job in a forum like this, we can talk and then you can't translate because the clinician has got a lot of challenges from, I don't know, from NMC, from the patients, from the economic point of view and relatives and what setup you got and a lot of other challenges. So it is not easy, but you have to know the science so that you can translate into practice. So poor uh, glycemic control will lead to bad metabolic memory. We know from probably a VADT is the best trial uh, that has been uh, uh, showed uh, uh, huge data about the bad metabolic memory. Um, uh, the veterans have been given all the facilities in spite of uh, uh, good control in the reason they, they are not getting any benefit because they had a bad past. So that tells you a bad metabolic memory. So it is a vicious cycle. Um, oxidative stress, advanced glycated end products. I've done some work on it. So AGE, uh, when the level goes up, the stiffness of the arteries goes up and there are a lot of other challenges with hypertension and quite a lot of other factors comes into play with renal and eye and other things. So, and collagen uh, cross links and chronic diabetes complication is the eventuality. And once you want to avoid it, I think uh, you have to go and control the glycemia. So this is the ADIC trial that shows that uh, micro and macrovascular complications are very high if you delay the treatment. So what is the right, right uh, time to treat 
and timely initiation of the this thing so what is the evidence so if i say some concept here what is the evidence to it if you see the uk pds 52 data it's a very old trial we 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 don't complete our lectures by not quoting uk pds but it is a very old trial um, you can see that has been taken up in right in 2002 early insulin to oral agent monotherapy is maintained glucose level below the target in 6 years so if you do early insulin initiation the 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 complication rate is quite less so early initialization significantly improves the uh, patient to uh, achieve the goal if you set up the goal and want to achieve it now i think um, uh, i'll come to that but i think without technology in future uh, there is going to be a huge challenge for us uh, we live in a modern era but we can talk anything about the cost but people uh, uh, the technology needs to be involved in future um, i think supradeep has mentioned about time in range but a lot of other things has to be incorporated in future we will all see um, so diet oad and oad with multi uh, uh, drug Uh, along with insulin so if you go for an early aggressive treatment and then you get a better result but the cost is hypoglycemia you have to consider that and keep that in mind and chance of getting less hypoglycemia will be the smart way to do so that brings me to talk about b smart trial um, that is um, Uh, Bajaj uh, in diabetic therapeutics in 2019, the publication. So you do with the basal ones. Uh, previously, uh, I remember the training days of mine when we have insulin workshop in Rutland and places like that in UK, where uh, uh, that insulin initiation has to be done only by the consultant, not by the general practitioners. But those are the days are gone. Just going for a basal insulin, just as a startup, and then timely one. and uh, should be injected uh, at appropriate time and that is the challenge so you have to inject in appropriate time um, and uh, we got the molecules now we can use 3 hours gap so you can uh, inject and then uh, you can inject uh, within similar sort of time within 2 3 hours before and after so basal insulin analogs provide that advantage of flexible timing as i mentioned and making it very very simple and intrusive and the, with the devices what we got and it makes the life so much easier yes the cost comes in but i i think you have to consider all that uh, training hypoglycemia and uh, i don't know the quite a lot of other things that uh, educators and quite a lot of things has to come in uh, if you use the traditional one so glagin 300 is the molecule i'm talking about uh, offers more flexibility in the timing of injection that can be administered any time of the day so um i think we had a discussion during the last talk where what are the oads that has to be added and what can be deleted uh, almost pretty much to me uh, if you are uh, having a challenge with uh, that in the tablets what you are maximally done then you add a small basal dose that's what you should do and then once you going for a basal bolus and everything you can add and delete some drugs that is my way of approach and if you do it and you won't go wrong because you must have attained some sort of glycemic profile with whatever drug you initiated and you add on a basal insulin that will provide extra 1% or a 0.7% or 0.8% you're looking for and if you want to add on a bolus thing then uh, you can mix and match the drugs what you got uh, glitazones the the main reason is when you start an insulin there is to be a weight gain uh, and glitazone already has got a weight gain challenge so if you have glitazone just consider stopping it but on the other hand if you want to use a small dose for insulin sensitization for example people can't tolerate a metformin and you adding a glitazone to it a very small dosage keep that one by all means but the weight gain is the only challenge uh, but uh, su's and everything we had a discussion earlier so benefits of uh, early initial in uh, uh, basal support along with the oral therapy uh, basal insulin is capable of uh, uh, providing the beta cell restoration and the microvascular complications as i mentioned when the a1c comes down the uh, the complication reduces thereby definitely you can uh, achieve the health economics uh, it you can reduce the cost to the patient in long run um early insulin add a lower weight of a lower risk of hypoglycemia and weight gain which you been listening to past two three talks and that is the main thing with the basal insulins and the modern insulins does a wonderful job um 
so if you go for the model insulin the evolution of basal to this thing the training days of mine and we had i remember the uh, lantus when launched uh, even the uh, the branding the coloring everything uh, has to uh, has come up with a lot of thinking and those are, it is like a, a bingo molecule for a very very long time uh, before all these molecules have come in uh, it is developed to overcome the short limitations and early basal insulin with the nph was the only thing before uh, lantus uh, 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 and lantus was a god sent molecule during our training days for a very very long time uh, before that we didn't have any molecule um, apart from nph and then the mix analogs came in but the basal insulin was flat insulin that is the lantus um, and then uh, large gene 300 i don't know whether uh, you might have heard the um, molecule talk from the person who uh, invented the glargine 300 i think he was describing how it has been done uh, um, it is a, a drug with less variability the the glycemic excursions are very very less and more prolonged action of the drug will give us a better uh, sort of molecule to use uh, when you need it so the smaller volume can be injected and smaller uh, subcutaneous depot is produced uh, when compared to the other molecules and then the different absorption kinetics for a non-gradual release is happens um, and then the distinct PKPD profile and that makes it a huge difference in the molecule as a whole when it goes to a smaller surface area uh, you see the glargine 100 and glargine 300 the area is very very less and it is the same molecular structure but the mode of protraction and metabolism makes it uh, unique so that uh, the, the variability is less and it is available for more or longer duration and so you can use it in and around uh, three hours I'll come to that um, uh, the PKPD because of the more stable and prolonged action uh, injection timings can be flexible between uh, two to three hours now the better efficacy with lower hyperglycemia and weight gain when you compare it with uh, glargine 100 uh, we are not comparing apples and oranges here. Uh, we are comparing apples and apples here. Small apple and a big apple probably. Um, and uh, uh, less weight gain when compared to uh, glargine 100. And switching from the first generation basal to glargine, it improves the significant improve in the pain score uh, with, the, with the easy usage and switching preference of the first generation to uh, sec the third, 3U300 makes a following scores, easy use, forced to inject, switching preference, and pain. You the, those people who have started using the molecule, you know the device itself has, uh, has got a unique technology. And this is the advantages of uh, 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 Generation 2, uh, Gant, Rajinikanth movie of uh, uh, Endron 1 and 2, the, the modern one, uh, the Generation 2 insulin has got a better efficacy and longer duration um, and reduced glycemic glycemic variability as I mentioned and it can be easily titrated and that's the main thing so you got a 6, 8 or 10 you can just titrate it and then pass, patient satisfaction is just amazing and uh, the weight gain you can get the patient confidence to you I mean if you start on a basal insulin like 6 to 8 units you they, what they thought about insulin will go off and patient will be in your side and even if you consider a bolus insulin during one time they won't say no to it and that is the experience I got. So practical consideration, you can start as a 0.2 unit. So for example, if you got a 60 kilogram man, you can go for 10 to 12 units at any time of the day and all OADs can be continued. We had a discussion about it already and the duration is good and the hypoglycemia risk is less. Any clinician or a GP can start it and then you can titrate it based on the response. So as I mentioned, the device has to be good as well. Uh, I remember the auto pen days uh, uh, when it's been launched with glargine this terrible uh, when it's being used and we had uh, loads of challenges uh, the, the injectable goes in it gets stuck and there's so many challenges people will bring it back because in um, Caucasians we have to use long very high dosage of 30 to 60 units sometimes as a basal insulin and that time auto pen can go more than 40 units and it was a, a terrible pen I think it's come a long way uh, to what uh, we got the, the two geo pen with less injection force and even uh, uh, the volume uh, can be accommodated more and uh, the, it is very very easy to use. So it is a reusable pen, but it looks like a disposable pen, but it's a reusable pen, but it's got a dedicated cartridge storage and it's a, uh, the, uh, the usage um, uh, 
uh, it won't get any wasted. And that is one of the things. And then the pen dimensions are also, uh, those who used uh, will know uh, very, very clearly. And as a doctor, sometimes we don't explain anything. But if you handle the pen yourself, uh, you will know. Uh, even the one unit adjustment is there, short dial extension is there, and uh, also the one unique thing is about uh, 450 units compared to 300 units each, uh, this thing. It gives a psychological advantage. If you get a 10 units per day patient, then you can use it for an ex extra another uh, probably 15 days or so. So in summary, um, I'm not here to compare apples and androids here. Um, but I, I think it's just to think the safety of any molecule what you're going to use. And I feel the basal insulin or the way forward if you want to titrate it along with OADs. And if you want to use the molecules, then the safer ones are all the second generation one. You got BMW to use, you got Audi to use, you got a, a, this thing. So you can choose what it is. And I know the cost comes here, but I think it comes with the safety advantage as well with hypo and. Um, uh, uh, weight gain risk uh, is less when compared to other molecules and uh, it is the A1C reduction and the glycemic excursions are very less and uh, I've just shown you in one picture with all the uh, quite a lot of advantages of the uh, generation 2 insulin. With that I think my time is over. Thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity and for patient listening.